the morning, we're going to go ahead and move on to another vice for review in the series of vice reviews. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at the Montana Mongoose uh, vice uh, made by Griffin. Uh, really kind of a nice solid vice. Um, very weighty. Um, it holds itself down um, incredibly well. It comes with a lot of the accessories that I would usually be buying, um, which I didn't have to buy in this case because it came with them, which was very nice. Now, before I do a review on a vise, I like to tie with it for, you know, a, a week or two just to kind of get the ins and outs and understand how it actually functions and works. Um, so I've been tying with this this vice for a, a couple of weeks now, um, and we will move in a little bit closer for a better view of it. Um, but a couple of things from from Griffin that are that are really nice is um, first it comes with a, a wonderful um, carrying case, so it's easy to take apart and take with you if you're traveling and uh, want to take a vice with you. And then it's got a really nice egg carton interior, which also comes with all the Allen wrenches that you're going to need to loosen and tighten different aspects of it. And it even comes with the C-clamp. So if you want to change from a pedestal, which is what I usually tie with, to a C-clamp vice, it comes with that as well. All you've got to do is kind of close it up there and click it into place and you're, you're good to go. Um, and, and Griffin was really nice. Um, also inside the box was a, a bobbin as well as a, a bobbin uh, thread tool that I'll probably end up using. Um, I use a different kind of threading tool, but it, it was really nice for them to include that in there. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the, the Griffin Montana Mongoose. So here is a much more close-up view of the Montana Mongoose here by Griffin. I've just got to fly in the jaws of the vise. As I was talking earlier, it does come with a, a bobbin threader as well as a, a bobbin, which is just really nice. I've got it sitting on the case, actually, that it comes with. The pedestal down here um, is very very heavy and stable so it doesn't move around a lot um, at least while I've been tying it's been doing a really nice job of uh, staying in place so it's not shifting and moving back and forth on me um, it is a rotary vise um, but let's start working from the bottom up uh, at, at the bottom here where our stem goes in if I just loosen this here I can raise or I can lower um, device and then twist it into the position I want and tighten it down and it pretty much stays uh, put once you've done that. Uh, there also is a, a hackle gauge here that came with the vise. Let's go ahead and move this piece up here for a second. So you've got a hackle gauge that you can wrap right around the, the stem uh, of the vise here. You can look at uh, hook size as well as gauge your hackle, uh, make sure your hackle is, is right. So one of the nice things also is the vise does come with a bobbin cradle, which is something that I use a lot. And just like most bobbin cradles, I've got really easy to access handles on either side of it. This side is gonna loosen my uh, cradle itself. This side, if I loosen it, I can raise it and lower it on the stem here. Then all I've gotta do is kind of Tighten it back in place just a little bit. For the screw on this side of the bobbin cradle, um, again, really easy to turn, easy to access. I don't need an Allen wrench for any of this. I can slide my bobbin cradle um, in and out for whatever length away from the fly that you might want to tie. So let's get up here to the business end um, of the vise. There are a few things here that I like, but it's taking me a little bit of time to get used to. Um, as I noted, it is a rotary vise, and so we've got a nice solid handle here that I can use to use the rotating feature. You can see the mongoose right here um, on, on the vise, and then I've got a little thumb screw here where I can kind of loosen that up or tighten it up so that it won't turn 
nearly as easily. On the back side of the vise, um, we've got a nice Allen wrench here that's going to pinch and hold the vise head in place. Uh, where that's nice is you can actually easily rotate it around um, as you need. For me, I'm not going to, I usually tie with it just about like that. So we'll go ahead and tighten this guy back up. So with that in place, um, there actually is an Allen wrench back here inside of the handle, um, if you can see it. And that allows you to kind of pull that handle off and you can kind of loosen or tighten um, how easily or difficult it is to spin that, depending on what you're doing when you're tying your flies. As with a lot of vices, this one comes with a really handy material clip that's just clipped right here through this hollow area of the vise itself. And you can loosen it with the thumb screw here. which will just make it kind of fall or, you know, where, so you can reposition it to kind of wherever you want within this groove here. So I'm going to tighten that back down. I like it about like that because most of the time I'm going to be tying with it out of the way. Um, occasionally I'll be, I will be using it that I'll show you here in just a second. But let, let's go ahead and start out with just functioning wise, um, same as a lot of these lever vices. I've got the lever here for the completely tightening it into action. And I've got a thumb screw here to loosen and tighten for the hooks that I'm gonna be putting in my vise. So if I loosen this lever by popping it that way, and then I can unscrew this thumb screw, you can see how easily that that fly comes out and this thing will tie up to very very large flies and down to small flies as well and you just hopefully can see that we're going to kind of open up those jaws really wide with this thumb screw or we can tighten it down so what i'll do is i'll stick my hook in the vise or in the jaws here i'm going to Tighten that down, finger tight, and then I'm going to pivot this back underneath the jaws of the vise. And that's going to hold this hook um, in place. The, the jaws are very narrow at the top, so it'll tie down to, I, I've, I've heard as slow as a 28, which I can't even see. So um, this is going to be able to accommodate hook sizes, um, just about all the hook sizes that you may want to use. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the Mongoose is a nice rotary vise. It's also an, uh, what I call an inline vise, which means that I've got the axis of my hook here, and I can make adjustments to make sure that as I want, if I want to, when I turn that vise, that hook is going to just kind of revolve around its axis, which is really handy when you're um, tying in material. But back here on the back side of the vise. You can see we've got a, yet another thumb screw. Um, if I loosen this without an Allen wrench or anything, you can see that I can shift this vise, the jaws on the vise up or down, which can be very handy. It's easy. I don't need, like I said, the Allen wrench to do it. So if you're working on trying to get your jaws more in line, and grab yourself a, something that you can kind of look at here. And you can see when I turn this upside down, I've got a gap. When I turn it back up, I don't have a gap. That tells me I don't have it quite in alignment. So let's go ahead and try an adjustment here. And it, again, it's very easy to adjust. So I've got this pretty close um, to alignment. So you can see my black, um, just, just for comparison purposes, that that hook pretty much just rotates around the one place. Not perfectly. I probably need to make some uh, other adjustments, but I think that you get the general idea. Um, and the end line is going to change depending upon the size of hook you're using. So I've got a big hook in here now. If I went down to a 22, I could make some adjustments to make that also um, turn in line like I want it to.
So as I noted before, um, it's a very solid vise. It's not going to move around. I prefer to tie on a pedestal like this here, but it does come with a C-clamp in here if you want to use the C-clamp. Um, a couple of things just to be aware of. I haven't tied on this nearly long enough um, to be able to say one way or another, but there there are a couple of things just to be aware of. Um, one, of one of the things that is just me, um, and I just have a hard time because I've tied for quite a long time, getting used to this kind of a, a lever. That lever sits under here, and you loosen it by pulling it straight out, like that. Then when I want to tighten it back up, I just pull it right back underneath the jaws, and then we're tight. What's been hard for me a little bit is I'm used to this lever being at the back of the vise, and I'm used to it pivoting down and up, not towards me. And so several times I've taken it and tried to loosen my hook and I can't because it doesn't pivot that way. So that's your pivot. I think you'd get used to it. Um, I'm sure I would get used to it after a while, but it's just different than what I'm used to using. The bobbin cradle, as I mentioned before, I can loosen that up and I can turn it and I can put that in place pretty easily. If I need it to go out further, this, this uh, thumb screw on the back, I can loosen that. You can see I can move that out quite a bit. Or I can move it in in close proximity um, if I want to. And then because it does pivot on the uh, stem of the vise here, or the shaft, I can go ahead and just turn that and move it out of my way when I'm not using it. So a very handy feature. There are a couple of um, pieces that are plastic. Um, I would guess some sort of a plastic. Uh, I don't know how durable it is. That That's one question that I would have. Um, it ties great, and I've tied a lot of flies on it. Um, feels like this is either um, steel or aluminum. Um, so you've got metal here. Your shaft is metal as well, um, and the base is, is metal too. Uh, this little lever here is actually plastic. Um, and you'll find a few components here that are plastic. So even my thumb screw here um, to tighten my uh, hook onto the jaws of the vise is plastic. Um, that feels like it's metal. This screw here on the bottom that is going to loosen or tighten, at least the top of this is plastic. And this mechanism here that's between your handle and the actual jaws of the vise, this chunk right here is plastic as well. So I would be a little bit concerned. Um, I haven't tied with it enough to know how long that's going to last um, or if it's going to break. Um, I've put a lot of pressure on it. Nothing's broken yet, um, but be aware of that. Uh, thumb screws um, down here for the stem to hold the stem in place. The thumb screws that are holding my bobbin cradle in place, they're also plastic or some sort of a, a plastic material. So that that's one thing that I would just suggest that you be aware of. Um, and, and like I said, I've, I've tied on it for about a week, a couple of weeks, uh, probably tied you know, 30 or 40 flies with it. Starting to get used to the kind of the different des design um, of the vise. Really the most outstanding uh, is the fact that this lever pops out that way instead of wh what I'm used to. And this vise is probably gonna run you between, I don't know, 220 to $250 um, for the vice. So it is a, it's a mid range vice. It's, it's not cheap, but it's also not, um, up there with some of the more expensive vices that you can get. So it is, um, obtainable, uh, if you're looking for a rotating vice, uh, just beware of some of the components on it that are plastic. Uh, I don't know whether to recommend it or not. It, because just because I don't know how long the plastic components are going to last on it. Um, I would have preferred them be metal, but then it probably would have cost a little bit more. So, so that gives you a pretty good overview, I think, of the 
Montana Mongoose by, by Griffin. Uh, I'll keep tying with it um, from time to time. It's probably not going to be one of my go-to vices per se, um, but I do want to use it a little bit more just to find out how durable some of these pieces are. Um, and if I find over time that, you know, they seem pretty solid, I'll come back and say, you know, I'm not having any problems with it. Um, if something breaks, I'll come back as well and say, eh, this was something that I was concerned about. Um, and that was the plastic components versus the metal components. So here's your look, Montana Mongoose. Mm -hmm.